I'm from Indiana, but I'm a Red Sox fan. And I'm from Minnesota, but I'm a Yankees fan. And welcome to the rivalry out of state, our baseball series here on the Running the Table podcast. I'm Drew Westland alongside me with me as always, Andrew Sinicariello, and this is our third episode of three in our prediction series for this season. We had American League predictions. We had National League standings predictions. Now we're going to do our awards. And at the end, we're going to give you our take for who's going to be crowned a World Series champion. But Andrew, are you ready to go? Let's run it. Let's do it. So the first award we're going to start off with is who's going to win the MVP. Now, I got... A couple, a couple guys that I think I, that can win it. In the American League, Shohei Otani I have as a finalist. I think he can win it, but I think Vladimir Guerrero Jr. is going to take home the hardware. Otani, Trout, and Devers are guys that can win it. I like Devers as a sneaky pick. Obviously, look at the hat that I'm wearing. In the National League, I have Juan Soto with last year's MVP Bryce Harper in there. Mookie Betts, I think he can have a really, really solid year. And then, you know, some sort of sneaky dark horse MVPs, either Austin Riley or Matt Olson from the Atlanta Braves. I think those two guys are really going to boom in a major way on that Atlanta team. It's just which one will it be? Or maybe both. Yeah. So I have the exact same pick as you in the American League. I also got Vladimir Guerrero Jr. winning MVP this year. And in the runner-ups, I got Shohei Otani, Mike Trout, and Aaron Judge. Judge for the same reason that you got Devers, basically. Okay. Hey, come on. He'll have at least 35 bombs. Yeah, but, but he'll only play 100 games. Eh, he, he can stay healthy. <laughs> he was pretty healthy last year. Okay, all banter aside. Go okay, on. Anyways, yeah. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., if it wasn't for Shohei Otani last year being the amazing two-way player he was, it would have definitely been his award to win. And I think he gets it this year. I think he has another season where he hits at least 40 home runs, maybe even 50. I could see him continue to improve. As yeah, I didn't give much elaboration for the Guerrero MVP take because I didn't think it was that far-fetched, you know? Right. I think a lot of people can agree on that. But then for the National League, I got the guys in the runner-ups like Juan Soto, Bryce Harper, Freddie Freeman. But I think that the MVP will be won by Matt Olson. His first year in the National League, first year with the Braves, and he is going to put on a show. He's going to tell the Braves fans, who needs Freddie Freeman when you got me? Hey, you said you had a surprise, and Matt Olsen certainly is that. I mean, I have Matt Olsen on the MVP radar. You have him winning it. That is a bold take if I've ever seen it, my friend, and props to you for going out and saying it because I went with the safe pick in Soto but you decided to just go balls to the wall and pick Matt Olson. I like it. I'm a fan of that. So now we're going to move on to our Cy Young winners. And in the American League, I have Shane Bieber taking home the hardware as the AL Cy Young. He was hurt a little bit last year, most of the year. He wasn't exactly, you know, the guy that he was. When he was healthy, he was on fire. I think if Shane Bieber stays healthy this whole year, and I think he's going to, He's pretty much a shoe in for the AL Cy Young. You got Garrett Cole as a finalist. Look, I respect Garrett Cole's game, but he has one too many blow up starts a year to win the Cy Young. I just don't quite see it from him. You know, I have Dylan Cease emerging for the White Sox. He had a big breakout year last year, and I think he keeps getting better. I think he'll be in the Cy Young conversation. And Justin Verlander, Coming off of Tommy John, he's looked pretty good in spring training. His fastball's up to 95 miles an hour, and he shows no problem at 39 years old. I don't think it's too far-fetched to see him in the Cy Young conversation either. In the National League, I have a Dodgers pitcher. You could go probably one of four ways. You know, if Kershaw returns to form, Julio Arias won 20 games last year. He was fantastic. If Trevor Bauer gets off of his administrative leave on time, April 16th, and he's lights out like the Trevor Bauer of 2020, I think he can definitely reemerge. But none of those guys win. It'll be Walker Bueller. Walker Bueller has emerged as the best Dodgers pitcher in a rotation where it is absolutely filthy top to bottom. Max Scherzer, I have as a final, the same thing as Corbin Burns. Those two guys were in the conversation last year with Burns winning the Cy Young. 
you know, a change of scenery for Max Scherzer shouldn't, shouldn't slow him down at all. And as a dark horse Cy Young, I actually have Sandy Alcantara of the Miami Marlins. The Marlins churn out starters like nobody's business. Alcantara, Rogers, and Pablo Lopez are at the top. You got Sixto Sanchez waiting in the wings, and we'll see if they can, you know, sort of remake Jesus Lazardo into what he once was. But Alcantara is the cream of the crop, and I can see him definitely getting some Cy Young attention this year. So, who you got with Cy Young, Andrew? All right. Well, I guess you'll hear some bias from me because I you have Garrett Cole. Cole. You have Garrett Cole. Oh, my God. Garrett Cole. Garrett Cole, Cole. Garrett Cole for the AL Cy Young. I might There's, as well have the guy in the back hey, of my jersey winning the Cy hey, Young. Nathan hey, Evolve. Hey, oh, my God. <laughs> he had a very legitimate case to win it last year. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He was All right up there well. with Robbie Ray. And I think Cole can have another great season with the Yankees. Dude, uh, I just want to give you some guff. I just – I uh, Yeah, I really yeah, know. Uh, but anyways, some other solid pitchers got in the American League. Obviously, Robbie Ray still exists. He's just in Seattle now. He'll definitely be fighting for another Cy Young Award. But then you also got Kevin Gosman. No one really talks much about because of how stacked National League pitchers are, but he put up pretty similar stats to Robbie Ray. And now he's going to be pitching for the Blue Jays. And I think he could be up there in the Cy Young conversation for the American League. And obviously, as he said, Shane Bieber, assuming he'll be healthy. Yeah, he's going to be lights out for the Guardians. And then for the National League, I'm actually going to go ahead and pick Max Scherzer. If he can replicate what he's been doing since he was traded to the Dodgers, it would be ridiculous if he doesn't win it. He was absolutely amazing when he was traded to the Dodgers. Was he like 7-0? and Oh, ERA under he absolutely two. was. It's Max Scherzer. insane. If you had Max Scherzer's season stretched out, it would probably be comparable to, to Grom. That is how lights out Max Scherzer was in that half season with the Dodgers. I yeah. completely agree. He's filthy. Sure. And, yeah, some other guys to mention in the National League. Obviously got almost the entire staff on the Dodgers. I think they could all be in contention for the Cy Young. And then DeGrom, when he gets healthy again, yeah, I mean, he's going to be right up there. He's Jacob DeGrom. He's the best pitcher. Right, of course. MLB. But I think it'll be Max Scherzer for this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the reason I didn't mention DeGrom is because of the innings. You know, DeGrom has been shut down from throwing for four weeks. Um, and then you get a few weeks of him ramping back up. And then you get a few more weeks of kind of some spot starts. Like, when a pitcher gets hurt, it's very different than when like a hitter gets hurt because it takes them a lot longer to build that arm back up and be like at full strength where they used to be. But yeah, I, I can't complain with Max Scherzer and Garrett Cole. Fine, fine. P pick your Yankee. I do respect yeah. Garrett Cole's game, though. Hey, I I'll just take a fine. No, hey, it's your opinion. <laughs> You are entitled to that. You can pick as many Yankees as you want, and I, there's really nothing I can say about it if, if you're so inclined. You know, I just think Garrett Cole will have one or two too many blow-up starts throughout the course of the season, you know, because when the Cole train is rolling, there's arguably there's no rolling. better pitcher in baseball. But then the wheels come off, and Garrett Cole looks like he's playing for the Pittsburgh Pirates again. So – it's it's the consistency for me. That's that's valid. But after that, we'll go to the rookie of the year in the American League. I have Spencer Torkelson winning the rookie of the year award. You got guys like Bobby Witt, Julio Rodriguez that have just been added to the major league rosters of the Royals and Mariners, respectively. Those three guys, Torkelson, Witten, Rodriguez, they can absolutely mash. I think they're going to be generational players, two, maybe, maybe all of them. And as kind of like a sneaky AL Rookie of the Year, granted, all of the good rookies this year are in the American League. Watch out for Reed Detmers on the Los Angeles Angels. He's a right-hander that can really strike out some guys. He's got that curveball slider combination that's absolutely filthy. The Angels are going to a six-man just to accommodate Detmers in that rotation. And I think with the innings and with the growth that Reed Detmers can show, he can definitely make a case for AL Rookie of the Year. In the National League, the picture's a lot more clear with Seiya Suzuki being the clear NL Rookie of the Year. 
O'Neill Cruz could make a case, but the Pittsburgh Pirates have him in AAA right now, and who knows how long they're going to keep him there. Until then, Seiya Suzuki should run away with the NL Rookie of the Year. I guess if you want guys that can, you know, maybe take it, Camilo Doval, if he takes the closer job outright, like purely taking the closer job because Doval right now is, you know, hedged to split saves with Jake McGee and maybe Tyler Rogers on certain circumstances. But if Doval is able to be the full-time closer, I think he can get some rookie of the year votes. I mean, shoot, Devin Williams won the rookie of the year as a setup man in 2020. So stranger things have happened. And then Alec Thomas, who should come up as an outfielder for the Diamondbacks. I think he is absolutely nasty. You know, with the he's got a solid enough glove. He can run, he can hit, he can do all of those things that you need, hit for power. But yeah, my rookies of the year is Torkelson in the AL and Suzuki in the NL. Yep, not bad. I'm actually going to start with the NL because, yeah, I don't got much more to add for that. I also got Seiya Suzuki. It, it should be him. There's not much more discussion to be had. But anyways, going on to the American League, I actually got Julio Rodriguez. But I could really see it being any of those three players you mentioned, him, Torkelson, and Bobby Witt. I feel like that part of the time, though, you often see a rookie of the year win with the best situation that they're in. It's That's some fair. years, some years. That's like fair. Aaron Judge, for example, in 2017. And I think but that's also because he hit like 52 bombs. Yes, I know. But I'm just saying Julio Rodriguez can contribute greatly to the already great Mariners roster. I think he would make more sense if he won rookie of the year. But like I said, I could really see any of the three winning it. These are all special players, but my pick is Julio Rodriguez. Nice. Those are pretty solid picks. And after that, we're going to go to the Hank Aaron Award for the best hitter. Typically, these line up with the MVP, but I got a couple different guys like to mention than in the MVP. Like the Hank Aaron, I think Vlad Guerrero Jr. is going to win it again. Otani and Trout will be right behind him. But instead of Devers, I'm going to mention Aaron Judge just purely based on the power and the short porch of Yankee Stadium. I think the way that Yankees lineup is built, he got a lot of big sluggers. I expect a lot of doubles, a lot of dingers, and a lot of strikeouts. Now, granted, the doubles and dingers mean base runners and RBIs, which to give Aaron Judge, like I think Aaron Judge is the best hitter in that lineup, bar none. Yeah, Stanton and Gallo can slug some dingers, but I think Judge stands out of the three. And if the Yankees know it's good for them, they're going to pay Aaron Judge and pay Aaron Judge now. But that's your problem, Cashman, Andrew. Please extend him. I'll let you call your peeps in New York because you're going to be there for the summer. Maybe you can pull some strings and, you know, <laughs> for, for your sake, get Aaron Judge extended. Yeah, please. Right. Please. That's all I ask. For, for the National League, Hank Aaron, I also have Juan Soto because he's the best pure hitter of the group. Bryce Harper, he can definitely make some noise. Austin Riley, Matt Olson, those are two really big bats. But instead of Mookie Betts, I have Ronald Acuna. Ronald Acuna will miss some time, but when he comes back, he's going to slug like always in an already stacked Atlanta Braves lineup. I mean, shoot, in the five guys that I've mentioned for NL Hank Aaron, three of them are Braves. Matt oh, Olson, fitting. Austin Riley, and Ronald Acuna. So that just speaks to how good this Braves offense really is. But, yeah, that's that's what I got. Guerrero in the AL, Soto in the NL. And funny enough, I have the two exact same players winning Hank Aaron. I also got Guerrero and Soto. But, yeah, in the American League, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about Stan. You mentioned how important RBIs are. Stan's usually a little bit later in the lineup, so he'll have a bit more opportunities to get those RBIs. You get like a assuming LeMayu, Judge, maybe Donaldson at three and then Stanton at four. Yeah, I think that could get Stanton more RBIs than Judge potentially. That's a big potentially. I mean, that's true. Uh, Giancarlo Stanton is a guy that's slugged 59 homers in a season before. I mean, the way Fangraphs has your lineup, it has Judge hitting second, Stanton hitting fourth, Donaldson hitting leadoff, question mark? Oh, I don't know about that one, but okay. Okay. I mean, it also, has DJ, it also has DJ LeMayhew on the bench. Fangraphs is normally a pretty reliable source. He but should who, lead off. But, but who anyways, knows what the Yankees are here. 
I don't, I don't know. I think the Yankees do have the flexibility, you know, to put Kiner Falefa, Torres, or LeMay, Hugh, any combination of the three up the middle. You know, I, I don't know. That That's just me. But, yeah, I like yeah, what you we'll say see. about Stanton. I think it makes more sense than, you know, people think. Yeah. If, if and then with back the, to the level of hitting 59 homers, Stanton will definitely be in the conversation for the Aaron. Yeah, for sure. And then, yeah, the National League, I really don't got much more to add. Pretty much nailed it right where it had to be. I guess also I had Freddie Freeman. I could see him also hitting a lot of bombs for the Dodgers. But, yeah, you pretty much mentioned everyone else. Matt Olson, Bryce Harper, Ronald Acuna. Yeah, expect a lot of home runs from them. Big dingers ahoy. Now we're going to go to – arguably my favorite award to look at the Mariana Rivera and the Trevor Hoffman award, because closers are fun, high leverage situations and watching them strike out guys is just a blast. Sometimes I'll turn on games just cause they're in the eighth and it's a close game just cause I know I'll get to see a really good closer, you know, finish the job or blow it. That serves for exciting games too. But there, there are two closers in my opinion that stand atop and it's really not even close that are just in a class of their own in the American league. It's Liam Hendricks in the national league. It's Josh Hader. I think those two guys are taking home the Rivera and the Hoffman respectively for the Rivera. I think Rizal Iglesias can make some noise in the angels. The thing that separates Rizal Iglesias and Liam Hendricks, because I think the next guy after Hendricks and Hader is Iglesias. Iglesias is just Hendricks that gives up more bombs and Hendricks, maybe it's because he's like tipping pitches. Iglesias, it's because he's making mistakes. Iglesias is another guy that strikes out a ton of guys, doesn't walk anybody, but when he gets hit, he gets crushed. So if Iglesias can limit that, he can emerge into that conversation with Hendricks and Hader. Jordan Romano, he's in a really good situation with the Blue Jays where he should rack up a ton of saves. The Blue Jays are going to be really good. That offense is going to put Romano in a ton of good leads in the ninth. And Emmanuel Classe for the Cleveland Guardians. He just signed a five-year, $20 million extension to anchor the Guardians bullpen. And why not? If you can throw a cutter at 102 miles an hour, if you can generate more swings and misses with that, Class A will be absolutely filthy. In the NL, Here, here's back to me and Edwin Diaz. I love Edwin Diaz. I think he's going to be really, really good for a much improved Mets team. Kenley Jansen on the Braves. You know, Jansen is going to be the anchor head. He was the anchor head of the Dodgers bullpen for a long, long time. And now he goes to a team that is just as good in Atlanta and they're going to give him the ball in the ninth. Jansen has the pedigree. If he racks up saves, I think he can get, can get there. And after that, I have the guy who took Jansen's job, Craig Kimbrell, the closer for the Dodgers. The Dodgers are going to be the best team in baseball. You're going to need a guy to lock down the ninth and Craig Kimbrell. There's arguably got no more experienced guy than Craig Kimbrell because he's done it with the Braves. He's done it with the Red Sox had some brief stints with the Padres and the White Sox and the Cubs last year before he was dealt. He was absolutely filthy. So if Kimbrell can find out what makes him so successful, he's going to be in the conversation for the Hoffman. But as far as the best relievers in baseball, Liam Hendricks, Josh Hader, cut it off. There's nobody yeah. better. So, yeah, I'll start with the Hoffman because, yeah, I have Josh Hader win his third Trevor Hoffman award. Yeah, I mean, he's got to be the best closer in baseball, Josh Hader. He's filthy with his pitches. Whoa. You're, you're going to say Liam Hendricks? I will absolutely say Liam Hendricks. Liam yeah, Hendricks is better fair. than Josh Hader, and that is a hot take that I will die with. But All right, yeah, it's a good take. That's just but me. Hey, think... if, if you guys want a hot takes video, I can definitely explain why I think that Liam Hendricks is a better closer than Josh Hader. But sure. Yeah, Andrew can oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, anyways, Hater, my opinion, is the best. And I would really be shocking to me if he doesn't win another Trevor Hoffman award this year. And then for the American League. For uh, Aldis Chapman. Just no. I was going to say, just for the sake of being different, I'm going to pick Rizal Iglesias. Obviously, Aldis Hendricks. Aldis 105 probably... miles an hour. Look, you, I slander <laughs> Chapman myself. I'm not picking him. He's not good anymore. Obviously, it's Iglesias, Hendricks, and then Class A. They're your best closers in the American League. And it really should be between the three of them, whoever will win the Mariano Rivera Award this year. 
My pick is Rysel Iglesias. Hey, Rysel's good. I loved watching Rysel last year. You know, with he throws from the side. He's got the fastball changeup slider. Very similar to Edwin Diaz, actually. I don't, I don't know why people think Edwin Diaz is so bad. He blows a couple of games. I mean, you think he has a Mets curse, which is a better excuse than I've heard for Edwin Diaz rather than he's not good. Diaz's stuff is too good. And I will also die on that train that Edwin Diaz is an elite closer, but that's just me. But now that we've gone through the awards predictions in our AL and NL standings videos, we had who we think is going to represent each league in the World Series. Now we're going to give you our 2022 World Series champion. Andrew, you had the Blue Jays and the Dodgers. Who's winning it all? And I got the Dodgers winning. I don't think it'll be a sweep, but I could see it being like four to one, four to two at the worst. The Dodgers are just way too talented, in my opinion, to not win this year. That's fair. I, look, the Dodgers are absolutely nasty. I've been ranting and raving about how good the Braves lineup is, you know, the Braves bullpen. The Dodgers are right up there and in some phases of the game, even better. So the Dodgers are not a bad pick. I have them having the best record in baseball for a reason. But with my World Series being the Chicago White Sox and the Atlanta Braves, I have the Atlanta Braves going back to back. This team is built to win. This team is built to win now. This team is built for sustained success. And I actually think trading for Matt Olson and getting him in place of Freddie Freeman, you know, that signs the Braves up for stability at first base and they have stability around the rest of the diamond. When your weak link is what catcher Dansby Swanson at shortstop. I think they can live with those problems and make a deal or two at the deadline. If they really, really need to, to go back and win it all. Hey, I mean, they did it last year. It's still won it all. They absolutely did. <laughs> but you have the Los Angeles Dodgers as your 2022 World Series champion. I have the Atlanta Braves as my 2022 World Series champion. And that is all we got for this episode, this series, little mini series of the rivalry out of state. It is going to be an awesome season and we are going to cover the entirety of it, especially when the Red Sox and Yankees square off in the Bronx, it's going to be a fun series to cover and just a fun wait. season overall. But until next time, you can watch our other stuff on Running the Table. Watch more episodes of the Rivalry Out of State. We got you covered with all sports and baseball. Got a ton of stuff for you coming on the way. And until next time, we out.